<laughs> All right. Let me just try to recall this as best I can. It happened a while back, and I try not to think about it more than I have to. For starters, I used to work in a gas station, but the title made that obvious enough, I guess. It wasn't a place in the middle of the city, but it wasn't way out in the countryside either. It was one of those awkward in-between areas where mostly it's just the low-end houses, fast food joints, and gas stations like the one that hired me. The station was on a two-lane road that wasn't far from a major highway, and we got a lot of people stopping in for gas who were on their way to the beach for the weekend, or just passing through on their way to the cities around us. Typical of any gas station like the one I worked at, if I do say so myself. But you see, that was during normal hours. Once the sun went down, oh, that was when the real fun started. And that was when all the freaks started showing up. Late at night, all the shadier customers would show their repulsive faces. Drunks would stumble through the doors and keep on going right for the back wall where we kept all the alcohol. Teenagers would slink in trying to buy cigarettes. I'd ID all of them and some of the cards they showed me looked faked and some didn't. To be honest with you, I didn't really care. If they wanted to wreck their health, it was their business. Potheads would wander in too and load up on chips and ice cream. Oh God, the ones who would buy the ice cream were a funny bunch. More often than not, they'd ask for a spoon with their ice cream and we only had the crappy plastic kinds. I had one idiot stand there for 20 minutes trying to scoop the dessert into his mouth with one of those bendy spoons. And then one time, a guy shoplifted the store right in front of me around midnight. Then he walked outside, called the cops on himself, and just stood there in the parking lot waiting for them to show up. I followed him outside and asked him what his deal was. He looked at me and said that he wanted a place to sleep for the night. I hadn't expected that, but I told him that if he wanted to sell the story to them, he should keep running. That he did. He walked off the property and down the small road. I heard the sirens not long after. But I suppose I should tell you about the big one. The odd one. The one about the guy who made me quit that job. I have a tendency to ramble and like I said, I try not to think about this guy too much. It was another graveyard shift. Another night of my life spent behind a cheap wooden counter. I was pissing my life away, but I was doing it for some money, so it was all good and I was better off than most people who walked through those doors anyways. It was around 2.20 a.m. or so. I remember staring at the clock in boredom, watching the two dots of the display tick on and off as it counted the seconds. That was when I heard the bell over the door, and I looked up to gauge the person who had just stepped into my little world. He was only a little over five feet tall, and looked like he could be 50 years old, I would say. His skin was rough and saggy, his arms and legs were dotted all over with tiny white hairs, matched by equally white hair, which hung down in long reams from his head. It was scraggly and matted together. You know how hair gets if you don't take a shower for like two days? This guy looked like he'd spent two weeks without the good graces of any shampoo. He slowly walked his way over to the counter, mechanically like each step was a deliberate action. Finally, he made it over to me, and he thumped his hands onto the counter for support. His hands were crisscrossed with varicose veins. They looked like cracks in broken glass. Lines of black grit ran underneath the edges of his fingernails. He finally opened his mouth to speak and gave me a good view of his slimy yellow teeth. Disgusting. He asked in a croaky voice where our bathroom was and I just pointed sternly toward the back corner of the room. There was a little hallway which held doors to the storage rooms and one small bathroom. He lumbered off in that general direction and I silently thanked God that that weirdo was out of my face. I heard the door click shut. Once again, I was by myself for the most part. The station was silent for five minutes, then ten, fifteen. Started to get a little weird. How long was this guy taking in the bathroom? If this were a normal looking guy, I wouldn't have questioned it. But the man in there was anything but normal. At the 20 minute mark, I journeyed out from behind my counter and towards the bathroom. I knocked on the door a couple times and asked if the guy needed any help. I heard him mumble from the other side that he was fine, but he didn't sound all that fine to me. 
I wasn't about to argue with him though, so I just walked back over to the counter and sat down in my chair. Another 10 minutes went by, and that guy still hadn't come out of the bathroom. I was getting agitated at that point. Eventually I started hearing a noise. At first I couldn't really tell what it was, but it didn't take long to figure out. I was hearing moaning. I started walking to the bathroom once again. This time I could tell, as I neared the door, that something definitely wasn't right. It sounded like the man was in pain, maybe even afraid. Sheepishly, I knocked on the door once again, and for a while I didn't get a response. But eventually the man managed to choke out two simple words. Help me. His moaning was getting louder and turning into yelling. I started hearing banging coming from inside the bathroom. I could even feel it shake the floor just a little. I went for the knob, but of course the man had locked himself into the bathroom and hadn't gotten around to actually unlocking it. I was panicking a little. I didn't know if this was just a bad case of the runs or something like that, or if it was something more serious. I started to think that the latter was true, but there was a rancid stench that was beginning to make its way out of the bathroom. It could have just been some horrible diarrhea, I thought. I shuddered a little bit at that thought. I shouted at him to open the door. He had to unlock it if he wanted to help, of course. But he wasn't listening to me. He had started babbling some incoherent nonsense about how he had to keep the door locked because he was only safe in that room, and that they were coming for him, he said. I kept shouting at him to unlock the door, but he was off on a horrible tangent about how they were coming for him, and they had finally figured him out. All the while, his slurred speech was punctuated by cries for help. He just kept shouting for help. I kept hearing banging. I was freaked out. And in that moment, I didn't figure I had the time to call the cops or anything like that. The man's speech was trailing off, and he sounded like he was in a very bad way. I'd like to say that I didn't freak out, that I knew what to do, and handled the situation in a respectable way. But I did none of that, if I'm being honest. I spent the next probably five minutes pacing in that little hallway, my hands pressed to my head in desperation while I tried to think of something, anything to do. The man's yelling and flailing had stopped, I noticed, and I was desperate to do something. Finally, I was struck with inspiration. I went into the storage room next to me and I grabbed a rolling dolly that we used to move some of the heavier crates around, then I rushed back into the hallway, and with all the force I could muster, which must have been a lot thanks to adrenaline, I bashed the door wide open. The smell that hit me almost made me throw up right then and there. I dropped the rolling dolly and stumbled away from the room, gagging. I almost fell over, but I steadied myself on a wine shelf. I had to take a moment to catch myself, and it felt like I was going insane. It really struck me that I needed outside help. So I did what any sensible person would have done a long time ago. I called the police. I assumed the worst, and the moment I saw the man, it had looked like he was certainly dead. He was sprawled out on the tile floor, half-heartedly resting against the wall. His back was slumped down, curving in the space between the wall and the floor. His knuckles were very bloody, and the pock marks in the wall, which were also licked with blood, made it fairly obvious he'd been punching around. It was obvious enough to where the smell was coming from. That guy was sitting in putrid film of brown liquid. Yes, he had crapped himself. He wasn't even on the toilet for crying out loud. I was still on the line with the police. I did my best to describe the scene to them. As much as I really didn't want them to know what had happened to that guy in the bathroom, I figured he could still need help. I announced to the operator that I was going back in. I held out hope that he was still alive, but feared otherwise. I guess I really went back into that hallway, just out of morbid curiosity, more than anything else. I had to pull up my shirt and cover my face with it to keep the smell from overpowering me, but it didn't do much to help. The guy had a yellowish powder all around his nose and his mouth, as well as a little froth at the corners of his lips. His eyes were bloodshot and glazed over. I said to the operator that it looked like he'd overdosed on some sort of a drug. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to go outside and get some fresh air. I was groggy, mortified, and depressed. A man had just died next to me for crying out loud. At the most, I was out there for five minutes. I could already hear sirens when I stepped into the cool night breeze. Only five minutes. But here's the thing. Here's what really messed me up bad. When the police arrived, they asked me to show them where the incident had occurred. An ambulance was there as well, and the paramedics were getting their equipment. 
I led them all to the back and it still smelled awful. There were still punch marks on the wall and there was still some of that drug powder dusted all over the floor. But the man who'd been laying there, he was gone. He was just gone, like he hadn't even been there. I don't mean he was gone in the sense that he got up and left. There weren't any boot prints, no streaks of liquid on the floor, no handprints on the walls. There was none of that. It was like he had just vanished, like he was never there. I can't explain it. I don't want to know what happened that night, and I quit a few days later. I couldn't keep going back to there, not after that. You know the things that that guy said kept replaying in my head? All those things about how they were coming for him? No way I could stay working in that gas station another night, because next thing you know, they were going to be coming for me. <laughs>